Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next monthly installment of our ILC Dover webinar series. Uh, my name is Kayla Hager, and I'm the product manager for Farm Bio here at ILC Dover. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, the chemical synthesis of active pharmaceutical ingredients, some of the challenges associated with this process, and how flexible containment solutions can help you solve these issues. It's a brief overview um, of uh, the, the points that we'll hit today. We'll start by briefly going over the chemical synthesis workflow and then mention some of the common challenges or considerations API manufacturers must take when running their campaigns. We'll then segue into single use technologies and how they can help some of these challenges, particularly in comparison to the use of stainless steel alternative solutions. And then finally, we'll touch on some of the specific ways in which ILC Dover can help you solve these challenges. The synthesis of APIs is usually a complicated and multi-step process involving numerous chemical transformations and operations on a range of raw materials with different physical and chemical properties. As such, there are many points throughout this process which present operational challenges for API manufacturers, including assuring, oper assuring operator safety, or in other words, properly containing the process to eliminate accidental exposure to hazardous substances, and of course, maximizing campaign throughput. Starting with the arrival of rails in the warehouse, where they often need to be repackaged prior to charging the reactor. It then goes through a series of chemical reactions before finally going to a dryer and mill uh, to be packed off for the oral solid do dosage process. And typically, as these series of chemistries and rechemistries progresses, the potency of the powder increases, presenting an increased hazard for the operator, which leads me to my next slide. When we look at what these challenges are, many of them can be lumped into four main categories. The first is overall powder containment and dust mitigation. So things like ensuring operator safety and reducing machine maintenance and downtime. And then second, operational efficiency, uh, such as maximizing throughput by reducing the time needed between campaigns and eliminating the risk of cross-contamination. And the third is a hot topic these days, and that is sustainability. We're reducing the overall energy and water consumption throughout the plant. And then finally, the fourth is this other or a miscellaneous category, if you will, where that are poor flowing, making them difficult to handle, um, and then these harder to contain uh, parts of the process. So how can we address uh, these issues? Uh, contain at the source. So let's start with the basics. Single-use technology enables process area versatility in that it is portable and as such easy to move and attach to attach where needed in the process. This allows you to more easily control the environment, reduce airborne particulate by keeping the system closed, protect operators from exposure to hazardous materials, reduces cleaning requirements and subsequently cross-contamination risks, and enables you to address or consider other factors such as ergonomics and containing individual equipment that is used. So what does contain at the source look like when looking at the chemical synthesis process? Let's first think about the repackaging of the raw materials prior to dispensing into a reactor. Most commonly, these materials are the facility in bags, drums, or FIBCs. These can be safe in flexible containment, a PST injector or jet mixer system, um, or a powder conveyance system. Then as we move down towards the reactor charging step, you can directly add non-potent or standard FIBCs or use a type C FIBC for solvent processes. Moving on to the centrifuge and rechemistry steps, there are several opportunities to introduce flexible solutions. For instance, um, if you're using a basket centrifuge for a flexible isolator or continuous line are available solutions. And if you're using a peeler type centrifuge, you can use a Dover pack or a continuous line to safely contain this process. Looking towards the drying step, there are a variety of flexible isolator solutions that can be employed to deliver both ergonomic handling as well as operator protection.
utilizing single use solutions ensures the product is closed, which meets typical company policy as well as FDA inspector preference, and versatility of the process area. Furthermore, dry powders, but more particularly wet cake, can be easily handled and transferred between the centrifuge and the reactor in the multi step synthesis. How do you ask? <clears throat> Let's zoom in a little bit on that particular step of the process. Oftentimes, the wet cake can be poor flowing and, as such, difficult to completely discharge. However, with a flexible intermediate bulk containment solution, you can visibly notice if the charge has completed and manually manipulate that bag to help the difficult powders along. Some other advantages of an FIBC over the more traditional stainless steel IBC comes down to cleaning and revalidation of those stainless steel IBCs, which is time consuming. Oftentimes there is an unknown amount of powder retained in the vessel and there would be needed to rinse uh, rinse this vessel down for disposal. The IBC is then washed with detergent and rinsed again, and this rinse is also captured and sent for disposal. Um, and due to the regulatory and environmental protection laws, particularly in the US and EU, oftentimes this disposal means you're incinerating these large volumes of water. After this washing step, the vessel needs to dry and the containment valve also needs to be disassembled and cleaned um, and sent for maintenance. Stainless steel IBCs take up a large amount of floor space themselves, but the cleaning equipment required also takes up space. Whereas with a flexible IBC or an FIBC, once you complete the powder discharge, you can seal it off, separate it from the reactor or centrifuge and send it for disposal. These two often need to be incinerated, but can be done at a much lower cost with a minimal minimal carbon footprint. Looking at a sustainability study from several years ago, quantitatively illustrates the reduction in water and energy consumption using single-use technology versus fixed or stainless steel alternatives. While this example is taken from biopharma processing, results, results still can apply to pharma processing. And as you can see from um, the table on the circle, the yellow circle, um, the there is an overall significant utility savings when you're looking at single use technology versus stainless steel as stainless steel. Um, furthermore, single use technology eliminates the need for lengthy cleaning, uh, holds time and cleaning validation, which slows production cadence and also minimizes the risk of cross contamination from the, uh, the chance of material retention um, even after the cleaning process is done. The total upfront cost of ownership is also lower with a flexible, um, with an FIBC. So if we're looking at the uh, reduced capital or the capital expenditure comparison, um, in the top you see the, the cost layout for introducing an IBC type system into your facility. Uh, so first you have the cost of the IBC itself, which are approximately $30,000 each. These IBCs would need a split butterfly valve connection, which are approximately $15,000 each. And then you, need, you would also require a precision post slip, which would position that IBC and split butterfly valve over the reactor, reactor or um, whichever other piece of equipment it needs to be positioned over, and that's a minimum of $125,000. And there's the washing machine or a clean in place system um, and, and drying uh, instrumentation, uh, which is another $300,000 minimum um, capital expenditure. And then on top of that, it consumes facility space because there's no space needed for storage when these items are not in use. So all in all, you're looking at uh, roughly $650,000 startup cost uh, to implement IBCs within your facility. And some of the assumptions used for this calculation is that the product contact material is 316 stainless steel. Um, the containment performance target of the split butterfly valve um, is less than one microgram per meter cube. 
and uh, the number of IBCs required uh, was based off of six batches that required five IBCs each. And comparing that to uh, the upfront cost of FIBCs, uh, first you would need a high containment docking system, typically one for filling and one for discharging, and that would be approximately $40,000. Um, and then rather than a precision post lift, you really would only need a simple hoist system uh, to lift and position the FIBC into place. Um, the high containment FIBCs themselves um, <clears throat> come in a variety of sizes and on average they're approximately $1,000 each using our Dover pack as the model for this. Um, and once again, um, calculating this based on six batches, um, five, F5 FIBCs per batch. And then these are sent for disposal uh, once they've been used. Uh, and then altogether, that is approximately a $120,000 capital expenditure. So the difference in upfront cost is uh, significant. Furthermore, setting up an IBC project can be more complex than FIBC projects. Um, looking at an IBC project, um, you have to select the size and the number of units. You have to select the containment valve, the precision lift, uh, what sort of cleaning process is going to be implemented. Um, you have to manage the floor space and the controls, including the electrical classifications of that room. Then you have the FAT and the SAT, as well as operator training um, and the validation documents, um, which are quite complex. Versus, um, <laughs> you know, an FIBC process where, you know, you do still have to select the size of the FIBC, but units can be purchased as needed. Uh, no containment valve is necessary. You really only need a simple play system to lift. Um, no floor space is required because these essentially fold flat and uh, can be stored with uh, minimal um, space requirements until they're needed. Um, <clears throat> FAT and SAT are one day each. The operator training is one day. Um, and the validation documents are, are minimal. So ultimately, when it comes to uh, transferring um, a, a process to either CDMO or a new location or bringing a new product process online um, or a process change occurs, the technology transfer um, of an FIBC project is a lot less complex than that of an IBC project. And even the hard to contain parts of the process can be safely contained using flexible containment solutions. Um, some customers default to PPE during these steps. However, PPE alone is risky as there could be a uh, uh, risk of cross-contamination and it puts the burden um, of protection on the facility controls alone. So if you have a basket centrifuge similar to a, the picture that you see on the left-hand side, this can be contained using a flexible isolator, a single-use um, flexible isolator like you see on the right-hand side of the screen. The same can be said for tray dryers where there is a single-use solution that can be used to contain this piece of equipment without relying solely on PPE to protect the operator thus reducing the risk of cross-contamination and taking pressure off of relying solely on facility controls to confer the safe environment. And of course, we did not forget about drums. However, drums do require a significant amount of manual labor, labor and they lack containment without um, any sort of isolation, like flexible isolator or isolating room or uh, ventilation systems. So how is it that ILC Dover can help address some of these challenges? Let's revisit the chemical synthesis process diagram we saw at the beginning of our presentation. You'll notice that it is now 
You'll notice that it is now populated with many of the different solutions that IOC has to address the needs of the API process train. Let's zoom in on a second for some of the contained transfer FIB. Let's zoom in a second on some of the contained transfer FIBCs, which you can see highlighted in the green boxes along this diagram. These contained transfer FIBCs are so named because it enables charging or discharging of the vessels in a contained or closed process. This family of bags starts with the Dover Pack, which is our premier product for handling HP APIs and APIs for more than two decades. This design is capable of achieving nanogram levels of containment, making it suitable for highly potent powders. Next comes the D100, which is positioned for lower to mid potency powders and is capable of achieving containment down to 100 micrograms per meter cubed. And then finally, you have the Guardian Pack, which is really positioned to um, handle inert powders where, uh, or non-hazardous powders such as salts, sugars, and, and some buffers. And then of course, ILC Dover has uh, a variety of other containment solutions, including continuous liners and flexible enclosures that can be customized to the equipment you have in your process. Coming back to uh, the, the process train a little bit um, and, and putting it all together, you know, typically speaking, as we move through the chemical synthesis process, um, the powder, uh, your, the powder product gets more potent as we, as we move through. So the raw materials that arrive are, are often no to low potency. And as we move through the series of chemistries and rechemistries, it becomes more potent until we get to our final API. And just to take a moment to highlight the flexible solutions and how they fit, you know, again, that guardian pack is really for that non-potent um, powder, the D100 to handle the more intermediate powders, and then the Dover pack for those high potent powders. And then of course the continuous liners and flexible enclosures fit all along the way. And everything that ILC Dover uh, does is quality by design and built for secure handling um, of these powders during the chemical synthesis process. Our products are developed specifically for handling pharmaceutical powders of various potencies, and it's not a derivative of applied into the space. Our films, our ArmorFlex films, are, were specifically developed for handling powder within the pharmaceutical space. We have a variety of sizes um, of solutions available for small batches as well um, as up to the bulk processes. Um, our ArmorFlex film is static dissipative and has high solvent resistance for pharmaceutical applications. The shape. Um, and the angle of repose uh, in the F on the FIBCs um, is done so to assure the best possible flow when discharging those powders. And all things are designed uh, with certain safety factors in mind to assure safe mo movement during lifting. Coming and circling back to the uh, idea of contain at the source um, and peering specifically at the Dover pack and the D100 systems, these maintain um, closed, closed charging, which minimizes the risk of contamination um, and particularly cross contamination in the shared facility. The process is contained at the source <clears throat> for the operator and the environment, which also keeps contamination from entering into the process itself. Um, so looking uh, a little bit at what that looks like, the Dover pack and the D100 have this shower cap for this stub, um, which securely protects uh, the process until the next Dover pack or D100 is stopped. They also have these bag out sleeves, um, which is a simple process used to remove the shower cap without ever breaking containment. Um, <clears throat> and then so that the Dover pack and the D100 can then be discharged. Sampling is required for most processes, and it's difficult to do in a high contain in a high contain containment. Our Dover pack has an integrated sample sleeve uh, to take fully contained samples at any time. 
Um, the sleeve is also 48 inches long um, and can be used to manually grab segregated samples at the beginning, middle, and end of the fill into the Dover pack to handle and transfer to quality or another location without any risk of exposure to the powder on the inside. We also have documentation for all of our products. All products have a certificate of conformance that is traceable within our quality assurance system. Our products are packaged in sealed bags for protection with labels, including traceable data. Uh, drawings are provided for all products. We also have documentation packages that can be provided to show assembly and use of the product. Furthermore, our films have data books. Our ArmorFX films have data books that state all the compliances of the film, and our quality system is audited with no major findings. Zooming in a little bit to our ArmorFX films, we have a variety of regulatory standards that the ArmorFX films meet, including the European Pharmacopeia, um, a variety of USPs. Um, there's no T, uh, TSA or BSA sources in our film. It is REACH compliant, um, and we have a drug master file on record. It's manufactured from 100% virgin materials. Uh, it has very high strength um, and a high resistance to solvents, which is particularly important when handling uh, wet cakes during the chemical synthesis process. Uh, it's static dissipative and is ATEX compliant. Um, and then we additional have barrier control for oxygen um, or relative humidity as well. So I want to revisit the common challenges slide that we discussed early on in the presentation. ILC Dover has a variety of containment and closed transfer solutions that solve or address many of the issues mentioned here. Our model of contain at the source ensures maximum operator safety, even for the harder to contain applications like the basket centrifuge or tray dryer examples we discussed. Furthermore, the powder containment and dust mitigation capabilities not only protect the operator, but also reduce the wear and tear on the equipment you used as each, pro as each process, even the process of filling and discharging FIBCs is a contained transfer of powder. Thinking about operational efficiency, the elimination of the need to break between campaigns for a complex cleaning process and revalidation of equipment to test for residual materials is a huge time saver, enabling quicker turnaround time and campaign switchover, and eliminates the risk of cross-contamination as you dispose of the single-use product after use, uh, rather than reusing um, a IBC. This also plays a role in sustainability um, as the amount of water and energy needed to clean the stainless steel alternatives is quite high as evidenced in the study that we also referenced in an earlier slide. And finally, single-use solutions enable effective handling of poorly flowing powders. And when you combine this with the excellent solvent resistance of our ArmorFlex films, it makes our FIVCs a fantastic solution for handling wet cakes and other difficult powders. Furthermore, single-use solutions take up far less floor space than the single stainless steel alternatives in that they fold relatively flat in a storage location when they are not in use and are then disposed of after use. And at this time, I want to thank you for your attention. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to us through our website, ilcdover.com. And additionally, um, you should receive a questionnaire and a copy of this recording after the webinar is over.